Welcome to another episode, family, Underground Railroad Radio. This is your host, Brother Rich. Um, I got a couple of co-hosts with me today, the Brother Blue Pill and the Brother KT, the Arch Degree. And we got on the line with us today, Arlene Bay. And I definitely wanted some co-hosts with me today because this man, Arlene Bay, has impacted all three of us tremendously with his body of work um, that we've been studying, you know, uh, the past decade. Um, one, uh, how you doing, Brother Arlene? I'm doing good, guys. Okay. One, one video in particular that I kind of want to go over again because we're in a, like a different era. We use different mediums, uh, different forms of communication. Um, when you did this, 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 t- this tape, and I'm referring to the anatomy of God, there was no Facebook or there wasn't, there wasn't even a MySpace at that point. And um, I remember having a tape on VHS, and I remember studying it, and I remember, you know, not really understanding it, but at the same time still being so attracted to it where I wanted to learn more. So obviously there was an aspect of my conscience uh, that was that wanted me to go seek out what you were saying, even though I didn't understand it. So with that being said, man, it's a pleasure to have you in the line. I'm glad Blue and KT's with me. Just to kind of start things off um, before we go into this anatomy of God, I know the brother's. Uh, may have some questions as well, and I want them to elaborate on some of the things Aline may have to say as well if they can. But just to start things off with uh, Brother Aline, you know, there's, there's so much talk when you go on the Internet about religion and hearing about religion, and you always – and you've been talking about the esoteric aspect of religion for so long, Brother Aline. And for some, some people consider it New Age information. But to my knowledge, Elijah Muhammad had knowledge of this, Noble Drew Noble Ali had knowledge of this. So just to start off, please tell me and tell the people how this, there's nothing new age about when, when you deal with this esoteric uh, information and how the, people, the men that we looked up to uh, that started these humongous movements in America were also privy to this type of information. Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, well, for my case, um, I came up through the Nation of Gods of the Nerve. Um, who was known then as the Five of the I came in contact with them at the age of 14. Um, in the lessons, um, we speak about um, seeing Prophet Muhammad. You know, um, of course, how can you see an individual who was supposed to be died um, 1,400 years ago? You know, um, you already know from that, you know, answering a question that it had to go beyond um you know, it had to go beyond, you know, your current belief system. You know, um, it had to go to a metaphysical understanding or understanding at that level or at that point. Um, the same thing you know, when I came into um, the nation, you know, nation of Islam a year later, you know, up under the minister of Farrakhan. You know, then by the time I was 19, um, I came into contact with um, Dr. Malachi Dark, who was known as Imam at that time. And um, then by the time I graduated college, I moved down to Atlanta, and Bobby Hammett was, you know, one of the brothers that I was rolling around with on um, you know, on many occasions, you know, and um, he the one who told me that, hey, man, you know, you know, people be doing, you know, if we have been doing what we do now, you know, you know, shit, man, I did this thing in no time. <laughs> so, so, so when Bobby said that, you know, man, I said, okay, I got, I'll do this. And that's how it happened. And so from 95 until now, um, that's what I've been doing. Um, you know, I have a doctrine of, the, of metaphysics, a doctrine of metaphysics that I earned from um, Emmanuel Bible College. You know, um, and so dealing with metaphysics, it means meta means to leap or go beyond. Um, and, of course, physics means the physical, you know, um, or the limitations of the physical body. You know, so it's just mainly is just a matter of mind over body, you know, and so it's not a new age thing um, in that regard. It's actually an old time religion, you know, which that's sort of, that's what Prophet Muhammad Ali was talking about, um, or Islamism, which it actually is a form of Sufism, you know, and we had um, Allah and man, you know, um, and that's what the you know the understanding that we all have to come to is that it's not something that's out of ourselves, it's something that's within. And um, that's real metaphysics, you know, essentially. 
But what about what about Elijah? Because I know he talked about the triple stages of darkness, and right. some people mm-hmm. say don't mess with Elijah. He was a Freemason. What what do you know about the history of Elijah? Yeah, well, um, um, Apostle on the Elijah Mark, um, it's a known fact that yes, he was um symbolically a, a you know they say that he had a third grade education, which of course is talking about three degrees of Freemasonry into apprentice, solo craft, and master mason. Um, he was in that, you know, in that level, but he also stated, so what I was saying was, is that, that um, Elijah Muhammad states in the history of Freemasonry in that book, that um, he was a Freemason, however, um, he's Muslim. Um, and the word Muslim comes from the metronature word Misra, which is um, the word mess ring, which means um, actually um, to be born of um, to be born of Ra, or from the tear of Ra, you know, and, and if you read the Perhem Hiru text, it states specifically that humans are made from the tear of Ra. Um, so um, when we're saying that we are Muslims, we're talking about from the tear of Ra. We're not talking about in the Arab tradition or belief system of one who submits to Allah, because that is the cognitive meaning of it. That is not the denotive meaning. The denotive meaning, which is the original meaning, means to be born from the tear of Ra. It does not mean um, to submit or surrender to the will of Allah. All right? Um, so um, he meant it from its um, denotive meaning, not from its, um, um, you know, um, canonic, you know, um, um, from its uh, meaning that was drafted onto it later on, its cognitive meaning. You know, right. so Elijah Muhammad was right and exact with his information. Um, if people will actually go back and actually uh, re-examine on um, what he was saying, you know, he had to explain it, you know, based on the levels of people, you know, at time. Um, so he tried to give them um, symbolism coming from our culture. Um, even masonry is from where masonry, if you get the book, um, the African origin civilization, like the you Yeah, you, you be break it. You breaking up bad. I mean, you breaking up bad. It's, it's not gonna come. It's not gonna sound good. I I don't know why it's breaking. I can hear you clear. I don't understand yeah. what's going on. Yeah, that's clear. It goes in and out. I think on my end. Right. KT, can you hear? Him? Yeah, it was breaking up. It got clearer more re- more recently. In the beginning, it was worse, but it's still breaking up a little bit. Mm. That's interesting, but I can hear all three of y'all clear as day. Yeah, I hear everybody else clear. It's just when you talk, it just starts to break up whenever you talk into the, uh, the phone. Right. Um, it's not on speaker, is it? No, it's he said it's Google phone, so it's probably... If the um you know the signal comes in and out and things of that nature, I've had the oh. same situations on the radio show when I did the Google chat. I mean, when I did the Google phone. So you just got to make sure that you're in a, a high band frequency area. Yeah, and that's interesting because I'm right next to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, let's just let's just continue to roll with it. Um. Uh, so, so brother Ali, uh, what, what question I have, brother? Um, in terms of there, there's so many division amongst all the religions in the world, whether it's Judaism, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Islam, whether it's Buddhism, or or whatever you may have it. Could you kind of give us? And I know you went over this before. Could you kind of sum up how there's an esoteric link between all of these religions, and can you? Break it down for us in an esoteric sense so we can see the connection uh, between all of these religions, whether it's Jesus, whether it's Muhammad or Buddha or whoever. And what, what exactly are they talking about from an esoteric uh, standpoint? Right. Well, the Sufis believe that there's seven major prophets. And, of course, um, the same is believed within um, our Islam, whether it's orthodox or unorthodox whether it's um, Sunni or Shiite or Wahhabi or whether it's dealing with the Sufi rendition or traditions. Um, It's the same within Christianity. 
So the seven major prophets, if you look at it, symbolizes each of the elements. Um, Adam symbolizes the earth. Noah symbolizes the water. Abraham symbolizes the fire. Um, David symbolizes the air. Uh, Moses symbolizes the sound or ether. Um, Jesus symbolizes the light as he was the light of the world. Muhammad symbolizes the last cell of the prophets, which is the um, seventh chakra, as which that um, symbolizes the top of the head, um, which is actually um, referred to as mental or thought. So these seven prophets symbolizes the seven elements in which that it takes in order to do um, any magical or cultic ritual or ceremony, as well as also the seven chakras or what is referred to as this, uh, referred to as the seven churches, um, the seven candlesticks, the seven winds, the seven um, candlesticks, the seven stars. All these things mentioned in the book of Revelations come back to the seven major chakra system. Now, hello? Yes. In, in, in terms of, like, like when, when, when there's things said in the Bible, like, say, uh, when Jesus said, he cannot get to the Father but through me. Right. Now, what, what, what does that have a different, you know, because I'm trying to decipher it. You know, different right. things being said. What, what does that mean from a, a esoteric aspect? What can we take from that and apply it to our lives if we don't take it literal? Right. Well, um, the breath is the mediator between the mind and the body. Uh, the mind stems from the pineal gland, which is the major endocrine gland or the master endocrine gland in the body, which is in the sense of the brain. So when one breathes, it creates an upswelling of energy at 19.5 degrees south. If I take a tetrahedron or a six-pointed star configuration and overlay it over the human body, it would be at that 19.5 degrees that that upswelling of energy will arise. Um, then at 19.5 degrees north, it would be when the energy contacts with the pineal gland in order to awaken the soul. So essentially, no one can get to the father, which is, the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland, which is half asleep, until the kutalini, which is all set, resurrects in order to awaken our saw, the sleeping giant, uh, which is the soul, and which that from that connection between our set and our saw um, forms Heru, which becomes Heru consciousness or Christ consciousness. Um, so Jesus is saying essentially that no one can get to the Father but by me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, hence the breath of life, which is the breath itself. Um, which is the mediator, once again, between the physical body and the spiritual soul or divine soul or mind. Mm. Uh, Blue and KT, what, what, what do you take from that, from what Arlene said, and just from examining the, the Bible and these holy books from a more uh, esoteric um, um, point of view? I think that um, he definitely is dead on with that a summation you know, because when we look at Yahshua, you know what I'm saying, and we look at the whole aspect of Shu, and we know that the breath is everything in regards to the um, the containment of the life force, then there would have to be, uh, that would have to be inclusive of, you know, the process of getting to one's higher self. It all has to come through the breath or the prana, you know, Oh, yeah, I agree, definitely. And, um, you know, when you go into John and they're talking about the wedding um, at Cana and Galilee, uh, what they were talking about was actually the process in which uh, your breathing and the oxygen is being carried by the blood because um, Cana means reeds and, and Galilee is um, the, 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 the actual circulatory system. So when you're breathing inside the the prana, you're bringing at breathing in the life force, and it goes inside the alveoli inside of your lungs, the the grape like sacs. Because remember they were they were talking about the wine and the grapes and the turning um um water into wine. They were talking about the moisture because shoe is not just air and wind, you know. Between shoe and tefnut, you're talking about the moisture or the the life force energy 
the whole collective of the air, the energy of the air. So as it's inhaled and it goes inside the lungs, it actually uh, converts uh, or rather goes through the alveoli into the bloodstream, in which the bloodstream is able to carry that oxygen around the body. So that's the marriage. The marriage is between those two forces, like he said, between the spiritual and the physical, and that's what that wedding was all about. You know, you know, here and y'all talk real quick. Here and y'all talk about breathing, um, and I want you to elaborate on it for me, Ali. It, 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 it just amazes me how something uh, so simple and something that you could basically do any time of any day in your household is something that our people neglect so tremendously, so much. I mean, every day you hear people talk about, oh, God, I want to know the truth. Oh, God, please tell me, please tell me. Oh, we need solutions. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Then when you meet brothers like Aleem and yogis or whatever, they let you know that, yo, the answer is in the breath. It's in the breathing. It's in the, you know, oxygenating, ox- oxygenating your cells. And, you know, it just it just seems too good to be true, Aleem. It's too simple to be true. It's too good to be true. And no, if you was a well- <laughs> if, if, if you were to walk in a room with this information and there's a bunch of black people, they might throw you out if you said this was the answer to their problems. So, I mean, how did something so simple but so powerful become so misunderstood and so looked down upon in this uh, culture that we live in, brother? Overlooked. Well, yeah. Right, overlooked. Right. Well, think about it. Um, we, we're talking about the average person eats one to three times a day. All right. Um, the average person drinks eight to twelve glasses of water, or some form of liquid or fluid a day. But you have to breathe twenty five thousand nine hundred and twenty times in twenty four hours. So that means the most important thing that you do on a daily basis is breathe. Now that's how it became so neglected is because it's something that you do the most of, but you do it unconsciously. Mm. So that's the neglect. That's where that happens at is because it's done unconsciously. We've never been trained or taught how to do it consciously, how to focus on the breath, how to utilize it as the the um the level of change in consciousness. It's through the breath that you can enter interpersonal consciousness and then go into infinite consciousness. It's through the breath. You know, um it's the it's the it's the meeting of the mind over matter. You know, it comes through the breath. The soul rises upon the breath. So everything that we do, like, for example, um, your breath, your insulation and exhalation is actually what is called centrifugal and centripetal force. These two forces hold your physical composition together. That's what composes your physical body is the breath itself. When the breath goes, your body decomposes. Mm. Your shell drops, so, right? Right, yes, right. So the most, so the most important factor of living is the breath. It's the reason why it's called the breath of life. This is why it says that God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What was that breath of life? That was Yahshua, Yahshua. So we so, wake up every morning with Shu, Yashu. Hence, the reason why when you sneeze, the sound you make is what Yashu. It's already reminiscent within you. All right? This is the Jesus Christ that is actually within you. Not waiting for a man from 2,000 years ago in which that we've been confused and deceived into believing within Christianity or a pale-skinned white Arab, you know, um, Muhammad or anybody else. None of this, you know, those are allegorical characters. You know, that was given to us to confuse us, to make us think that God is an external search. When God is an internal search, Elo or Elo or Allah is an internal search. Ura is an internal search. It's not something in which no. that we have to do X. Can I ask you a question, my brother? As we know, oh, first I have to ask permission, of course. Okay. Next question. Indeed. Mm-hmm. As we know, all things that are within are also without. Right. Okay. And we know that we are manifestation of universal principles on this mm-hmm. physical plane as well. 
Yeah. So is there any chance, right, through the history of man, and we know that, you know, there was never a time when man was not, mm-hmm. can it be possible that there was a physical manifestation of this allegorical story or these principles that we're speaking of in order for man to know himself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What better way? Yes. Yeah. It was. So, but every one of us can yes. reach that same level if we just applied ourselves through the science of breath. So right. it wouldn't well, be right. something in which that just occurred one time or one time thing and which that we've been be- duped into believing. It would be something in which that would be almost an everyday occurrence if we simply applied those principles. Right. Well, so what I'm saying is that if we're talking about the law of averages, we're saying that all of us, can attain this particular level, right, in order mm-hmm. for the 99 to be able to achieve it, then there had to be one that already mm-hmm. has come before mm-hmm. and set the mm-hmm. template that has already burnt the copy for that copy to be now, you know, carbon mm-hmm. copied. Right. But even then, um, it wouldn't be someone who has, is said to have died for your sins you would understand is that that would be the breath of life inside your skin. And well as also, we would know that there's stars in which that are called suns, as in the son of God would have died for your sins, would have been a star up in the sky who actually went into supernova mode and actually died so that your physical body could become composed of the stardust energy. Um, in which that, um, we know that more than 90% of your body is stardust energy. So um, mm-hmm. you are a physical representation of the universal miniature form in that regard from the star or the sun in which that gave its life so that you may live. Um, but it's not a man per se who had to do that. It was already done universally through by way of the sun or a star um, in which that you are now a living representation or a living incarnation or a walking star um, to this day. The book Crucified mm-hmm. Saviors, wasn't there, there wasn't actual people, though, who was able to manifest these great deeds? Didn't that oh, yeah. Book talk about? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you can get the book called, um, you can get the magazine from Nexus Magazine. It's called The Emergence of the um, African Avatars. And it speaks about um, Simeon um, Kabongo and um, Simon Kabongo and Simeon Toko. Um, Simeon Toko was so powerful, he was able to um, do what the Bible says and bring down legions of angels to do his battle. Um, matter of fact, it was a thousand dwarf-like trois people um, who was musc- who had muscular bodies. And there's witnesses who seen one of them turn over a five-ton truck with one arm. And these 1,000 um, cherubims of seraphim scared away the whole Belgian army. And within the next year, the Congo was a democratic republic, free from the rule of the Belgians. Um, just because of this mass aberration in which that Sonny and Toko was able to do via his mind. Um, so he was able to project these beings into existence. You know, um, we have these same gifts. Um, you know, so the thing is, yes, um, Simeon Toko is, a, is an example of this um, melanated um, supreme being um, who was able to manifest. He was able to stop an airplane in mid-flight. Um, because they were trying to throw him out um, of the plane into the Atlantic Ocean. And to stop them from trying to do so, he stopped the plane in mid-flight and um, told them that um, unless they stop with their plan, you know, he would not move this plane forward. What, 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 what's, what's the brother's name? Simeon Toko? Right. His name is Simeon Toko. Simeon yeah. Toko. Now, 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 the first thing a person would think when you say that, Aleem, is, where the hell is he at now with black people going through all this shit in America? If this, right, is, able, right. if this right. is able to be manifested, we needed right. somebody like that for a long time in this month. You know what I'm saying? So right. we, well, he was, he, he was in Africa. Uh, um, um, he right. was in the country. He was um, in Angola. Matter of fact, his body is, um, is in a high area of the, um, of the um, Angola mountains now. Still, um, you know, still... In, in, in good form. It looks like he's just sleeping, um, just like Yogananda. His body is not decomposing. Um, he was 66 when he um, when he veiled his form. You know what I'm saying? 
but there's so many reports. Um, they thought that they cut up his body. He reanimated himself. You know what I'm saying? Um, they had him go up on a seesaw, um, and the blades cut up his body, chopped up his body into parts, into pieces. And he was able to draw his body back together, reanimate himself, and get up. You know, um, I mean, there's so many different tales of what this man was able to do that it even goes beyond Jesus in a sense of the stories that we heard about him. Because remember, even in the Bible, it says greater things he would do. And Jesus was saying that. So these are some of the greater things that you can do. Simeon Toko was the catalyst for this, you know, in a sense. And he was born, um, um, he died in 1984. So he was living when many of us was born. You know, this man right. existed on this right. planet. So I can talk about someone who I know while I was living, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, who was able to do these things. You know, not somebody who I might have to speculate about, you know what I'm saying, 2,000 years ago. I can talk about the nigga who just was here, t you know, 25 years ago, you know, right. 30 years ago. Right. Okay? So so I ain't got to go that far. And he did some greater shit than this, this, this dude that we reading about from 2,000 years ago. This dude was able to not just reanimate his body. They took his heart out of his body, and he lifts up his shirt and shows them where they took his heart out of his body. His corpse sat up on the damn table, on the operating table, and told him to put my damn heart back in my body. Why are you prostituting me like this? And they put his heart back in his body. Right. Now, for the sake of the listeners, is there any um, narrative that they can go and read in the books that have yeah. been written. You mentioned the emergence of the African, African avatar. Article. Is that a book or a magazine? That's a magazine article from Nexus magazine that was published, um, I believe, in 1998, somewhere around there. And they can actually um, put it into the engine search right now in Google, and um, Google will actually pull up his name, Simeon Toko. That's S-I-M-E-O-N, Simeon Toko, T-O-K-O. And then there was Simon Kabongo. Um, and Simon, S-I-M-O-N, Kabongo, K-A-M-B-A-N-G-U, Kabongo, all right, or K-I-M-B-A-N-G-U. Um, so Simon Kabongo, he was like a prophet. He was able to resurrect the dead. He was made the lame walk. He made the um, those who were blind to see, the deaf to hear. And people seen him do these things. Thousands of people seen him do this, you know what I'm saying, in his time of living. You know what I'm saying? Um, so these was miraculous things that occurred within this last, within this last, what we call the 20th um, century. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So we're looking for, for greater things to occur in the 21st century. You know, so the only way that we can achieve it, based on my knowledge right now, is through pranic breathing, um, which the breath is prana. You know, that is your internal prana force is the breath. And so by meeting that internal prana force with the external prana force is how you gain access to as above, so below, as within, so without. That's how you master the particular elements, earth, air, water, and fire, um, and become, as we refer to as the avatar. So when we, you know, turn on our TVs and we open up our newspapers, and last year we witnessed a national which turned into an international campaign with people carrying slogans and wearing T-shirts and, you know, turning these T-shirts into fashion statements to say, I can't breathe. Right. All right. What does that do to a collective consciousness of a melanated people going through, you know what I'm saying, a, um, a, a, a time zone and a galactic vortex like we're moving through, you know what I'm saying? We're, go we're still moving through the uh, the rift, you know what I'm saying? We're still exposing ourselves to a part of this universe that we've never been exposed to, and we're magnifying under this blood moon with this 30- and 50-year mm -hmm. shadow, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, what kind of ritual are we witnessing with that affirmation being manifested by our people? Isn't that something? That's that's deep, <laughs> right there, <laughs> you know. And of course, what we can say is, is the fact that that slogan has taken some reins within this year, um, coming from out of last year with the death of Eric Gardner, you know, uh, within the state of New York, the borough would be Staten Island, 
um, yes. where he was um, killed by an illegal chokehold on which that the officer has not yet reaped any repercussions from that um, and probably will not likely to do. Um, but mm-hmm. And as he was being choked to death, he was stuttering or saying that he could not breathe. Um, of course, right. being that he was so big, he was intimidating, so they felt as if they had to put um, extra pressure upon him. But he also had a weak, um, you know, weak, I believe he had a weak heart. Um, um, he had problems uh, with the respiratory system, with his lungs, so forth and so on. So he was not in tip-top condition, you know, in order to handle anything of that, you know, of that magnitude. And that chokehold took him out. And so for... Uh, retaliation by those who was marching, following after um, Al Du Sharpton, you know, um, you see the slogan comes about with I can't breathe. Um, of course, with the panic and the fear in which that is, you know, struck within um, the people because of the police department, um, every time they see police now, they're not going to be able to breathe. They'll stop breathing, you know, um, subconsciously based on that quote. And of course, you know, mm-hmm. stagnate their life force by doing so. Um, so, I mean, we see a whole lot of percussions taking place. The rituals, of course, during the, um, you know, during the particular moons. Um, you know, we had the blood moons or the red moons in which that was occurring um, during those time periods. Um, even during the, um, you know, during the trial, you know, there was um, whole forms of different things that were taking place astrologically. Everything mentioned in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, in a sense, seemed as if it was going on. You know, with the moon turning red, um, like blood, with um, the various um, earthquakes in which that was occurring. All these things were taking place on the planet Earth during the same time period. So we understand is that what causes, um, you know, we go to the lessons of the nation of God's and Earth for the 5% it says what makes hell rain and earthquakes um, um, snow and earthquakes. It says um, the son of man. And um, well, mm-hmm. what causes that? We know that is the solar flare activity that comes forth from the sun. You know, the solar plasma, the what is called the coronal mass ejections, um, solar flares. Um, and what these solar flares also do is not just cause um, the earth to erupt, volcanic activity, um, earthquakes, um, waves and um, tidal waves, um, um, as well as also it also does internal raising too with the um, upswelling of energy of the Kotalini. The more um, solar flare activity um, onto the planet Earth, the more we take in as melanated people through our melanocytes. And what happens is that we gain access to our abilities in which that they were psychically attacking us um, through their training and through their TVs and movies for us not to acquire. And so this is just part of the rituals for us not to acquire our gifts um, based on I can't breathe because they know that breath is the science of life and is what takes us into the next plateau of um, understanding our particular gifts. Um, we know that you have five gifts um, in which that you do on a daily basis or five senses. You have touch in which that when you expand that becomes like chemistry, meaning that you can be blindfolded going to a dark room and actually touch a cloth or some type of article of clothing and actually know what color it is that you touch it. All right. Um, and also pick up on the last auric impression, which means the last person that wore that particular article of clothing. So um, then, of course, you have uh, for sight, you have clear audience. I mean, clairvoyance, excuse me, in which that is this um, seeing, which you take, you take the sight to the next level and which that now you can see into the future or into the past or into various timelines of the, of the present. Um, we're hearing, you have clear audience um, in which that you can hear conversations um, on planet or even off planet. You know what I'm saying? You can hear conversations in the um, on in ionosphere, which is in the Akashic Records or the Universal Library or, um, you know, so you can hear all these types of things um, for um, taste, you know, clear guestance. You know, you can actually taste um, different things in a dream in which that psychologically or psychology um, states that you, you can't, you, you're not supposed to be able to do that, you know, but right. we as many people have and have done these things in lucid dreams, no problem whatsoever. Um, you know, while they still dream in black and white, you know, we kicking it up in high um, HD, 
You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, <laughs> you no. Know, uh, okay. Yeah. Right. 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 And then of course you have, um, you know, um, you know, smell, which is clear sentient, which, um, you know, we can actually smell within our dreams. Um, smell particular um, smells within the auric um, feel of a, of um, you know of ancestors that have passed on, and that's how you might knew um, Bob, you know Uncle Bobby might have wore um, some chaps or something, you know some old <laughs> you know some old you know cologne, and you're like, yo, it smells just like Uncle Bobby up in his piece, and you know he's yeah. you know you can't see him, but you can smell that damn cologne, you know. I know you hear Uncle Bobby. Old smell spice, that. yeah. Yeah, I smell the old ass <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so so these are gifts in which that we develop once we learn the science of breath we can tap into and which that extend our five um senses. Arlene, and this this question is for Arlene and KT. Um you know that they say Jesus the Christ is, is representative of uh represents our cooling leading energy. What what does Fear represent in the Bible. Who's the character that represents fear? And could you elaborate on that? Oh yeah, um, Judas, um, um, Peter. Uh, when Jesus told Peter to get thee behind me, Satan. Um, Judas, when he betrayed Jesus, you know, with a kiss for thirty pieces of um, silver. Um, and then the devil himself, you know, when he came to Jesus and tempted him for um, for forty days and forty nights, you know. Um, you know, attempting to show him every, you know, all the kingdoms of the earth and to have him to bow down to him, you know, so forth. So, you know, fear is um, shown in that aspect in, in the New Testament tale, you know, over and over again in those various stories. But then in the Old Testament, um, you had um, Cain and Abel, you know, Cain feared Abel, you know, um, and therefore he murdered him. You have um, Esau and Jacob. You know, Jacob, you know, cheated Esau from out his birthright, you know, um, out of fear that his father was not going to give him, you know, his portion, you know, of the inheritance, you know. Um, so, I mean, we, we have the tale told over and over again and shown, you know, in the various stories. Now, what, KT, you still there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, you want you want to elaborate on that the whole fear aspect? Well, well, yeah. All the thoughts, the thoughts in the Bible were the fear because um, in all these stories that you see, it was it was their thoughts. It was the it was the thoughts that they allowed to to take the better of them to make all those choices and and, and those decisions, and they materialized. Um, you know, and and Kim, it was the fetters. Um, when you list, when you read the Pert M Haru, they they would refer to him as the fetters. Um, but they are the thoughts. They're the ideas that you're allowed to linger and to take root um, that, you know, you have control over. You're supposed to let go. But the minute that you let them take root and, and grow and develop, um, you know, they take over. And then your actions uh, follow those thoughts because you're not going to, you're gonna, not going to do any ash, actions before a thought takes root first. So that's the pretty much the common denominator in all the stories is their thoughts. Exactly. Having control of the thoughts. And, you know, that that gets into the whole squaring, you know, squaring of your thoughts and everything like that, you know, in, in the other books that they right. talk about. And that's how you prevent the, the fear from um, surfacing. Right. And fear is stored in the kidneys because the adrenal glands is directly on top of the kidneys and which that produce adrenaline. Yeah, fight which or flight, is, right. Which is only meant for fight or flight. So if it's becomes your everyday thing to be in that mode, then, I mean, you're putting a lot of stress upon the body. So hence causing the aging process, because it's killing and, um, and um, shortening your um, telomeres, which is um, the extended um, portions of your DNA, which gives life to you. So it's shortening them. So, exactly. You know, and that, that connects back to the whole thing you were talking about with the breath. Um, okay. With the breath, um, it's the pressure. You know, a lot of people don't understand how important pressure is in the body because, you know, the problem across the board is blood pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. What is pressure? Well, pressure is the force exerted upon, you know, whatever tube or vessel that you're talking about. But how do you measure pressure in the body? You measure pressure by a, 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 a unit called um, MMMG, um, which, is, which is millimeters mercury. 
So Mercury is the air principle. Mercury is the mind. Mercury is communication. Mercury is the breath. So it's through the whole measurement of pressure that stabilizes the body. Now, with fear being stored in the kidneys, the other thing that is responsible for the pressure in the body is the kidneys based upon the waters. So you have the breath with the with the millimeters mercury, and then you have the kidneys with the water, and that's how you're able to keep the fear out, you know, keeping that body clean, keeping those waters balanced, keeping that air coming in and out with your deep breathing. Yo, 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 Blue. Peace. Yo, 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 if, if KT is the next generation, Arlene, we good, man. <laughs> we good, man. Man, that's, that's which, big shoes. Which, that's big shoes right there, buddy. <laughs> we good, which, bro. Which, Shit. which somewhat I, leads me to the next question, you know. Exactly that as I'm in the audience listening to both of you brothers, you know, and I, I know what the brother Rich is saying, you know what I'm saying, that this information can clarify so much confusion in the community when people can actually – get a, a inner sight or inner understanding about or understanding for that matter as to how the body works, you know, and how fear is induced and all of these particular things, you know what I'm saying, that will pretty much stop people from abusing themselves and thus abusing their outer selves, which is their community. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Rich often come under fire by the, the, the contingency of our brothers and sisters that are a lot more militant, you know, they got blood in their eye, you know what I'm saying, and they want to get busy, they want to get it on, and they want real tangible answers about how to get out there and get busy with their adversary. And they're, you know, some of them might hear this, and they're like, man, that stuff's soft, man. Like, breathing, that's the answer that you got for us? We need bazookas, brother. You talk about breathing when we need bazookas? You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. escapism, you know what I'm saying? You mean a piece of this. Right. Well <laughs> that's funny because um <laughs> we no purpose in carrying no damn bazooka, is it? So, <laughs> so 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 I can give you the bazooka, but if you you know, but if you can't breathe properly, um even the first thing you're firing a gun, you got to learn the breath. You gotta learn how to breathe properly. Yeah. To fire a gun in order to shoot it in the center of um of the of, of the mass in the sense of the mass, you know. Look even when, you like, you need the you atmosphere know. for the for the bullet right. to even go off. You need the atmosphere. Right. It's yeah. not just gonna yeah. fire on its own. Exactly. It's the pressure. It's the pressure. Right. So 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 the whole thing about even firing. Um um. I know I got certified at Fort Bragg. Um, using an M16. You know what I'm saying? When I was coming out of high school, when I was going into ROTC. You know what I'm saying? As a sharpshooter. You know what I'm saying? No glasses, you know, and I was nearsighted. And I was able to hit center mass almost every time <laughs> because I was able to control my breath. Yeah, you know it's the breathing with the sharpshooters. Right. That's right. That's right. And you have to take in consideration the wind. They always tell you that, too. Exactly. Right. You have to put in the right. Which direction the wind is coming from. Okay. Exactly. So it's all, everything is breath. Everything is air. And I wanted to go back over something else that you said earlier when you were talking about the Black Lives Matter. So what a lot of people didn't notice with the whole don't shoot, can't breathe pot campaign was it, it was a, com, it was a comedic, um, indoctrination that was going on. Um, they, they, it was, it was an assassination because the whole don't shoot campaign was the car symbol. They had everybody right. having their arms up in the car symbol. And when right. you say don't shoot, like if you're not using that T, you're saying don't shoot, don't, don't shoot, shoot, don't shoot. So you're talking about can't breathe. And that's why the Black Lives Matter went along with it. Black Lives Matter went along with it because we're talking about the matter, the, the mata, the nature and all that, Black Lives Matter. So the don't shoot and the car was what was being put in our mind. That's how our spirit was able to open and accept it. Right. Indeed. Oh. Indeed. Now, 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 Aleem and KT, now, if they say, you know, the Bible deals with this breath of life concept, uh, mm-hmm. it also deals with, you know, uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And as, right. we, know uh, by, as we know by now, your mm-hmm. thoughts, your thoughts and emotions create your reality. My question is, Aleem, I know you into the science of breathing and meditation, how? Why do they tell you meditation is about 
slowing down or stopping your thoughts, if thoughts is what creates your reality, why when you're at your most peaceful, they want you to stop or suspend thoughts in order to bring about a, a stronger manifestation of things? It seems like a contradiction. Uh, well, it's receive. Question. Receive, right. baby. Well, <laughs> right, right. Right. You have the it's called be still and know God. The Bible also says that peace be still and know God. So um, the stillness is for when you want to receive. That's what meditation is for. Remember, prayer is when you are giving out a question. The call. That's the call and the meditation's response. Right. right. Call and response. So prayer is the call. Meditation is the response in which that you will receive. Um, so um, you have to be still to know, you know, to get that response. Now, of course, if you're manifesting something, you know, you have to make sure that it's in um, in three. You know, threes is what gives forth a manifestation. Um, your mind, your whisper, and then an audible um, conclusion to that thought. Um, that is the symbolic to the three ways of manifestation. Everything always has to be in a triangle. A triangle is the form for manifestation. All right, so, you know, if you're trying to bring something into existence, of course the thought is there, but you have to bring it you know, into um, a a whisper and, and then into an audible state so that, you know, is the word made flesh. You know, remember, Jesus was the word made flesh. You know, the word was God, the word was with God, you know, and the word became, you know, um, became flesh. So, and if I can elaborate, mm -hmm. if I can elaborate on that at all, because that, I, I feel exactly what you're saying when you go into the body, because this is, in the, in the anatomy um, of God, this is what really, like, touched me 10 years ago and, and really got my mind open because I was already on physiology heavy all my life. But this is the thing that kind of unlocked the key and showed me the whole super hey room inside. And, um, and then later on it connected to John. And, and you just said John, you know what I'm saying? So now I know I got to bring it up. But yeah. the whole concept yeah. of, of the RNA Mm -hmm. And and the triplet codon, okay, the triplet codons being the 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 pre the prerequisite for the proteins being created by way of the ribose inside of the cell. All right, when you talk about triplet, you're talking about the triangle. You're talking about the threes. All right, mm -hmm. the amino acids, you know, being the letters. Okay, so the letters and threes, now you're making the words. So then the transfer RNA ends up combining with that RNA and the ribose, and now you end up stringing these letters together to make words, and then the words start becoming sentences, and the sentences become paragraphs, and now you're producing flesh. Right. Now, the thing that you hit me with so hard back at that time, because I used to wonder about when I was when I was studying, you know, my, my, my physiology books, was the redundancy in the codons, because when you, when you study physiology and you get in the DNA, you see that they say there's 64 codons. Right. Right? But there's only 20 amino acids. So right. each amino acid code... There's like seven of them for it, mm -hmm. and you like why is there like seven different codes for one amino acid? It ain't. It's that all those extra codes are codes for other things that we have not accessed yet. Those are those powers that you were talking about earlier with Simeon and Simon. You know mm -hmm. they were able to to access those particular codons. You know what I'm saying? Those particular redundant codons in the DNA, they became expressed, so they built the proteins necessary to do all that particular work inside mm, the body. Wow. Exactly. Now, now, even even bigger than that, when you look at those 64 codons, now you get into, like you said, with the I Ching. Right, the I Ching. You see what I'm saying? Right, exactly. So then you, and then you start getting into divination and, and, and being right. able to see in the future and all that just through... The codes of your DNA. Right. Mm. Exactly. And see, Ancient Future by Wayne Chandler speaks about um, the, about the trigrams, which is part of the hexagram or the uh, I Ching, which is the book of change or the book of transformation. And right. And the 64 mutations of your DNA. We know that we only use 10% um, of our DNA. The other 90% is 
unactive or as you stated, non coding, which is referred to as junk DNA. So yeah. they found junk DNA has an actual purpose in the body and that there is still signals being transmitted from junk DNA, but the scientists thought that they was just leftover um um evolutionary um Junk. Yeah, garbage, it's garbage. garbage. <laughs> no, 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 Rap rappers. Right, right. Hot dog meat, yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, that that sixty four, that sixty four is what got me. Now this this is this is the, this is what came later on because of because of blue, and um, you know if anybody listens to Blue Pill, we all know uh, what he's infamous for, and that's the 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 44 energy so if you have 64 codons and you know that we're only responsible for using 20 of them right then the 44 ends up becoming the hidden codons that's necessary to turn you into heyru that's why it's so dominant in all of the superhero films right because that's the 44 that's missing indeed wow. Now, 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 in terms of, you know, we did stuff this, we do, in terms of uh, when we study the Bible, when we study the words of uh, of Jesus and him saying and, and observing his miracles and him saying the works that I do, you will do but better. We think right. about doing our best. We, we all want to manifest, you know, thinking about that, you know, how he turned water to wine, like KT was saying and what that symbolized. We all want to manifest to the fullest extent. My question about reality, and I'm approaching this from a more quantum physics perspective. You could explain it biblical or however, but are we creating our own reality? Because quantum physics says that there's infinite possibilities out there, infinite, that, that already exist. So are we creating our own reality, or are we tuning in to a, a reality that already exists? and contains that desired frequency that we're looking for. So it's like, are we creators or are we, re are we receptors? Are we being re – it's creative just another way of saying you're just being receptive to energy that's already there and you're tuning into it? Well, um, it's like we just finished saying about prayer and meditation. It's called a response. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's both. I'm about we're to about, say. Like, we're, talking about the, we're talking about the holographic universe, Michael Talbot's book, in which they right. that that – the universe is a hologram, but so is your cellular structure. I can take one spark, one 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 skin graph or graph of um of skin and clone a whole nother you into existence. A, a strand of hair, a speckle of blood, uh, um one one speck of spittle. You know what I'm saying? I can clone a whole nother you in existence. So that means that one cell, which is 76 trillion cells in your body, one of each of your cells have and contain your whole very existence, you know. So that's – and what does a hologram need to survive? It needs light. So there's a light in which that um, you should be um, – that is being transmitted. We know from the center of our galaxy, and it's called Alcyon, which is called photonic energy. Well, our planet has entered into the photon belt. So that means that this light is now um, – is here within the now they say that this has only happened within the last twenty five thousand years. Now Elijah Muhammad speaks about the twenty five thousand years. He referred to it as a holy Quran or a renewal of history. So right now we're going through a renewal of history gene, yes. gene, um, genetically. All right, and this energy is bombarding us, and our melanocytes is eating this light. Matter of fact, on um, Frank. Oh, Ball, there we go. You segue. I, I, I'm ready to come back in if you tag people, son. <laughs> Yo, check this out, though. Check this out. This is how I'm seeing. I'm, I'm just here to reinforce uh, what Brother Ali is saying. That's all we're here to do, son, because I'm going to give you all some, some real look. I'm going to tell you all Google is right now. He just said, what, well, melanocytes is doing what? Eating light, right? Okay, so what if I told everybody listening? that scientists have just proven that melanocytes contains rhodopsin. Right. Now, if people don't know what rhodopsin is, 
okay, when you eat beta carotene, okay, which you know you get out of the orange, the orange fruits and vegetables out there, right, your body converts it into vitamin A. The vitamin A then gets combined with a protein called opsin. Now you got rhodopsin. Now what is rhodopsin for? Well, if you look in your eyeballs, you got something called rods. Rods are one of the two mechanisms that enable you to see light. Well, cones enable you to see color. Rods enables you to see black and white. Now, black and white is obviously more powerful because that's the mechanism that does not lie. The color gives you the illusion. The black and white tells you what's really going on. It also assists in peripheral vision. So if you got rhodopsin in your melanocytes, and rhodopsin is good for nocturnal vision, night vision, things like that, peripheral vision, then what does that mean for people who have melanin in their skin? That means that you are not just absorbing light, you see it. And by it being predominantly for the for nighttime, what dominates the night? Oh, I don't know, maybe stars? What are stars? Stars ain't nothing but light. So that means all those ancestors that Pumbaa said, big balls of gas burning billion miles away, when they sending that light down to you, your melanocytes see all that light. They see it the same way your eyeballs do. It comes inside. It gets converted into electricity and energy so you are able to converse with the universe. That's your call and response. Right. That's your hologram. That's why, that's why I said, you know, as a response to what they said, there's nothing new under the sun. I said, yeah, there is nothing new under the sun, but things that are new are born at night under the moonlight. That's when <laughs> the plants grow that's under the moonlight. Is. That's where you, you know see what's saying? really going on. Like That's black, right. Light. Yeah. Hey, Amen. And, and coincidentally in enough, yeah, a few days ago they just came out with the contact lenses that will enable those that are not uh, melanin enhanced and sufficient. Oh yeah, the melanin coated contacts. Right. Yeah, right. Melanin coated yep. contacts. Yep. I've seen them. Night vision. Yeah. Very interesting. But yeah, wow. brother, when you when you brought up the melanocytes eat, eating the light, I was like, oh man, I gotta say it. <laughs> <laughs> right, and because there's a there's a famous quantum physicist by the name of Frank Barr, who stated that melanin, um, um, you know, eats the light, and yep. um, in particular our melanocytes that he was speaking of, and that by eating the light, um, it evolves the matter, it, is, it evolves us. So right. when people talk about um, evolution, well, what ev well, what's the process of evolution? It's the light in which that evolves us to the next level of consciousness. So transforming us from Homo sapiens sapiens to Homo Christos or Homo luminous is the next phase in which that we are going into, which is the fifth dimensional being. Well, well let me ask you: Is that because I hear on some sites um, I see people saying that we're going from carbon-based beings to crystal, crystalline-based beings. Yeah. Silicon. Sil 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 right, crystal, right. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're talking about? Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about, brother. Okay, right? okay. Exactly. You know, wow. we're being transformed, you know, um, right now based on um, these energies that is um, that we have come in contact with, um, what is called photonic energy. So it's transforming to photonic beings. Mm. And man, we we got like a. It seems like we got to pay more attention to the inside than the outside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We completely yeah. neglect the yeah. inside, and all of our attention is on the outside, and we're looking for results. And it's like you looking. It's almost like you're walking up to a mirror and trying to change how you look in the mirror. When all you got to <laughs> do is touch your face. And, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like we got this shit. Yeah, we got this shit like backwards, man. Yes. Right. Exactly. Michael, so, and Michael wow. Jackson said, "Man in the mirror." <laughs> in the mirror. While while we have the people's attention and we're talking about change, transformation, and eating sunlight, um, an area that is you know of much contention and that I get a lot of inquiries about is people ask me about solar gazing, sun gazing. You know, right. what is the appropriate times for sun gazing? How much of it should be done? Are there any techniques that you would offer a novice, somebody that's just hearing this information, just coming into it, 
but it's stimulated by what's being said, and they want to go and start eating some of the sunlight through their, uh, you know, their cones and their tubes. Right, right. Well, definitely, you know that um, solar rejuvenation or um, sun gazing um, changes the nerve tracks within the brain, um, within the eyes, the rods, um, as well as also it changes the brain structure and permanently activates the pituitary gland and the pineal gland, um, hypothalamus and thalamus gland, which is known as all put together is um, called the crystal palace or the crystal city, which you mentioned in the book of Revelation. Um, so what happens is that between the hours of the morning, right after the sun comes up. Aline, over the, Aline, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. Yeah, so right after the sun comes up over the horizon um, yes. is the best time for the um, for the sun gazing to take place. Um, and now that we're going into, you know, here coming into the spring, I know it ain't quite spring yet there in New York, but, <laughs> you know, you know, I know y'all, you know, still <laughs> no element, but, um, you know, but, but we're looking at between the hours of um, 7 and 8 in the morning right now is the best time in order to do the sun gazing and starting out. Um, the individual want to be barefooted with their feet on the ground, grass, or, you know, um, or some type of um, natural uh, minerals um, underneath their feet, whether it's the um, sand particles, whether it's rocks or whatever the case is, um, or even grass itself. Uh, we Go know then. that, right, right. So we want them to be able to be barefooted so they can um, breathe in the prana through their um, soul chakra, um, or what's called the bubbling spring, so they can bring the prana up from the ground, the chi or chi energy from the ground. Um, and then in the same regard, take the energy in um, at the eyes, the hair follicles, their, um, you know, their uh, facial hair for the brothers or you know, or, you know, and just store that energy into their melanocytes, into um, their three dantians. There's three areas that you can store energy. You can store it in your belly button, uh, right below your belly button, called your lower dantian, in your mid dantian, which is your heart chakra, um, specifically at the back of the heart, and then at the third eye level, which is referred to as the upper room, um, which is mentioned within the book of um, Acts where Jesus came down into the upper room and he breathed onto, um, onto the disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. Um, that is the third eye area, um, essentially. So we want to be able to bring that energy in at these three areas and store the energy. If it's going to be done at the navel, then it expands your life force. It creates longevity, even immortality. If it's done at the heart, then that produces what is known as um, conditional love, um, mercy, compassion. Um, you know, what is done at the third eye, then that creates a high IQ, intelligence. Um, also, at the back of the third eye is the medulla oblongata, which is the mouth of God, um, in which that gives you access to your past lives and even um, build up what is called photographic memory. So, um, by about starting out, you were the first um, few days. In particular, I think it's around nine days. You would do about 10 seconds um, to 30 seconds um, of just staring at the sun. No more than that starting out. And then through one course, eye, correct? You're saying? Yes, you can should do they, it through. Should they start through? Right. You can do it through one eye starting out um, most of the time, or either through both eyes, depending on um, how you feel. You know, as far as um, the energies is concerned, um, it's not something to be taken lightly. That's what we do know because there's a tremendous amount of energy that is streaming in. It's not just the solar energy. You're talking about cosmic energy, which is also coming in. You're talking about 300,000 tons of stardust energy for to the planet Earth daily. All right. So uh, we're looking at a tremendous amount of energy that streams in. And we sit downstream from Sirius. And being that the solar winds have depleted and destroyed the ozone layer, we are receiving um, serious energy um, for the first time um, within the last 25,000 years or so. Um, this is something else that is being reported. So this is the reason why they have to put up um, the artificial cloud, the chemtrails, 
right, the harp system and all these different, you know, um, mechanisms in order to ensure um, to cut down on the energies as they are coming in. But I remember Dr. David Blair told us something 25 years ago. He said it's like an ant trying to hold back a tidal wave. So, mm. <laughs> you know. So it's... Is it just is it just the morning? Uh, is it just the sunrise? Is the sunset also right? Because you're looking for the red sun, right? And you're looking at the correct. Yes, yeah, so it is. You, you can do it around now in the evening time. It would be somewhere around six thirty to seven thirty nowadays. Um, you know, as we are going now into the summertime, spring into the summer. So now that wow. would be the best time to it around that hour. Um, in order to get um, the energy, then you can do the exact same thing. Um, so now you would do your other eye at this time, or either you can do both eyes. Um, so it depends on the way in which that you feel comfortable doing it. Um, but once again, uh, morning time, dealing with Heru or Horus, and of course that would be the right eye. And then as the sun goes down, you're dealing with Atum, um, Set, you know, um, hence Tahuti, another form of Tahuti in that sense. So then you'd be dealing with the left eye. So um, right. you can do it in that manner. So now, this is they... this is a this is this is another example of how um, the universe is reinforcing that it's time for us to to get on that because um, the biggest movie that's coming out right now at the at the turn of the spring into the I mean turn into the spring is Avengers Age of Ultron. Everybody's waiting on it, everybody's thinking about it, everybody wants to catch it. Now, though they're adding two new characters up in there, the Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, really the most profound character they're gonna be bringing in the Marvel is a character called Vision. Now, right now we're talking about um um, solar gazing or sun gazing in the morning. Now that's that is vision. Now what makes it so interesting is you know I'm, I'm going to give out a little bit of decoded real quick. You know that y'all got to look forward to, but vision is Ra Harakte, and anybody who knows who Ra Harakte is um, in in Kemet cosmology, Ra Harakte is the uh, Heru of the two horizons, meaning the two red suns. So what's the uh, how, how much is it a coincidence that they got the 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 Ra Harakte, the Heru of the two sons, and his name be Fission, and from his third eye he's able to shoot a red laser. So they're letting you know right there with that character that now's the time for us to go outside and, like he said, stand in the soil, stand in the grass. And in the early morning during the first red sun and in the early evening with the with the uh, evening red sun, be able to absorb that high-frequency beam so that you can say there's no strings on me. <laughs> mm. Now, is there any intent that a person should have in their mind? Should they have their mind clear? Should they be meditating what are they saying to themselves when they're absorbing this energy? Should they just be open for receivership? Um, they can be open. They can also do positive affirmations or decrees. Um, they can do prayer. Um, if a person is suffering from an ailment or a sickness or disease, then they would just simply feel the energy um, removing that disease from their body, sending it down into the earth or you know, if they also are doing a hug, I'm hugging a tree suddenly, then they can always transfer that negative energy, um, you know, being that the tree gives off oxygen. Uh, we take in oxygen and we give off carbon dioxide. It takes in carbon dioxide. There's a biosymbiotic balance between us and nature itself. So um, since that is the case, we can also um, uh, respond in that regard, too. You know, you know, and, and dealing with this, you know, and this is a this is an amazing subject. Uh, you know, um, I'm honored to be on the phone at this time talking to all y'all. You know, if it wasn't the radio, just to have this conversation. It's what we come down here for when you know when they say know thyself. So just wanted to throw that out there. But uh, touching on what you said, Alim, and this is something extremely important that I think gets overlooked a lot as far in the metaphysical community. And something that I think we're beginning to learn more and more more of now 
is this concept of uh, affirmations or uh, just anything in general having a meaning to it. And from what I've studied, <clears throat> from what I've been studying, I want you to elaborate on it. <clears throat> Everything down here has a dual nature. So when we say um, say your affirmations, uh, like l l let's say I say um, I am rich. Just because I say the words I am rich, that has a dual nature to it. So some people, if you say I am rich, they will literally get sick from saying that because all it does is make them feel poor while they're saying it. So when you study quantum physics and you study Bruce Lipton and these people, they show you how the feeling, the feeling is what goes out into the universe as electromagnetic energy, and the words are just supposed to be symbolic. But the word doesn't necessarily have to mean what, they, what you were programmed to believe in me because I can say I am rich and feel poor, and the result will be I'm sending out poor energy, just like vice versa. I can say I'm rich and feel rich and become even more rich because I feel rich. So go into the aspect of things having a dual nature to them and not to get caught up so much and just, you know, if, if, we, if it was simple as saying I am rich, every motherfucker down here would be rich. Because that's the easiest thing to say, <laughs> just to repeat of I'm rich. What? That, that shit is easy. You know what I'm saying? But obviously it's not working for a reason, and we're not understanding the in, emotional intention behind words that we say. So could you elaborate on that for me? Right. Well, we're looking at um, the intent. So, yes, you can say a word, but if there's no intent back in it, that means there's no power. You know, um, and then also... Um, you want to be able to add the frequency into the, into it, which is the repetition. But even in the repetition, it must have the intent. It must be power. Um, once again, if there's no power, then there's no there's no manifestation. You know, so uh, we're talking about intent. We're talking about um, frequency. You know, equals the power equals manifest. Um, you know, comes forth the manifestation. You know, so it has to be in that regard. It has to be in three, you know, once again, for the manifestation to take place. So, yes, um, you know, you can recite something over and over again, but if there's no connection or there's no feeling to it, you know, then there's no real intention, then, of course, um, there's a poor connection in which that you are setting yourself up for. And just like you said, um, more than likely, nine times out of ten, you're not going to be rich, even though you might – Said it, you know, a hundred thousand times slash, you know, whatever, you know, is because there's no power. You have to have it. The intensity and the power comes from the emotional body. So it has come, from, like you said, the feeling of it. You know, you have to visualize and and, and actually do the feeling. You know what I'm saying? You have to, um, like like what you talking about with a uh, rich. So you not just can't say that you rich. You have to actually touch the money. You know what I'm saying? You have to um, um, touch, you know what I'm saying, the gold bars, you know, um, you know, smell the money, you know, whatever the case is, whatever you can add, the more senses you can add right, to right, right. right, the more and the, the more quickly that it manifests, you know, um, that's, that's, that's the science. Hey, and, and, and if you want to elaborate more on the whole concept of the intent, we have to understand that the power of the word comes from the action that follows it. Right. So if you spend most of your life saying you're going to do a thing or saying that you're about a thing or talking about a certain subject but you're not embodying that thing, then you can't expect when it's time for you to put that call out that you're going to get any type of response because you never exercised it properly. So the first thing you have to do is actually exercise your word and you exercise your word by following it through. Then once you got that thing in sync with you, when you're following through with everything you're going to say you can do, then you can say abracadabra, and that should have pop up. Exactly. Mm. Now, just to touch on, to go back to the Bible a little bit, um, you know, a lot of people that study the esoteric principles say when they say, uh, talk about the 12 zodiac signs, the 12 disciples they're really talking about the 12 zodiac signs, and those signs exist within you. Now, some people think that this is like figuratively or, you know, 
is is the twelve signs live like they say every man is a woman is their own universe? Do they mean this literally? Like, are we literally our own universe? Are we? Do we literally have these planets in us? Like, is this shit literal? And we and what we're seeing in the sky is literally in us. Or that's just some, like, fancy terminology to make us feel good about ourselves. Nah, it's literal. <laughs> it's up in that thing. <laughs> it's up in that. <laughs> this is real. Um, because you I agree with... Oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Now, I was going to say, if you get Rudolf Steiner's um, information... Ooh, boy, he just um, went um, there with that. Not um, Rudolf. Right, he's a part <laughs> of the society. And he states that um, microcosmically, we have the same thing in which that is external in the sky, such as the sun and the twelve pit, uh, and the um, twelve zodiac signs. It correlates underneath the skull as the twelve pair of cranial nerves and the pineal gland that it sits around in a circle. Um, and then if you go to my teacher's book, um, Sanyata Saraswati, the jewel in the lotus, he makes the statement that the twelve pair of cranial nerves sits around the pineal gland in a circle. Um, these 12 pair of cranial nerves is the 12 um, disciples and Jesus at the Last Supper. Um, this is the 12 nights at the round table with King Arthur. You know, this is what this is all talking about. Um, and it's right in your brain. Um, and these 12 nerves, 12 pair of cranial nerves, um, is activated through the cerebral nerves, which is 31 plus 2 nerves. And these nerves extend out to the various organs in the body and your, um, and what is called your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, you know. And so they have control over um, these particular senses that we talked about earlier, touch, taste, smell, hearing, and seeing. These 12 cranial nerves deals with that. So um, the one in particular is called the vagus nerve. The vagus oh, nerve that's the one. Right, the vagus nerve stems all the way from out the brain, all the way down into your digestive system. Digestive system, you know, and then you um, and then you get into your that's your second brain. Right, that's your second mm -hmm. brain, which is it links your abdominal brain, which your which is your instincts, your gut feelings, to your intuitive brain. Mm -hmm. So, what's your intuitive brain? Where's that at? That's in your head. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But that's through the activation of the vagus nerve. Which controls the abdominal brain, which is your into, which is your instinct um, area of your body. That that is where you like, like I was saying, that's where you say like gut. That, you, um, that you got a gut, gut feeling yeah. about something, right? Um, um, when you see the spidey um, um, tingles goes off, you know that happens at his head, so that symbolizes his intuition. All right, so and it, and it happens independent of the brain. They say that the the colon and the whole intestinal, that whole thing there, is really another spine. It's a real, it's another uh, spinal column. Right, right. Mm. As a matter of fact, scientists have found now um, neurons in the digestive yeah, system. in the digestive system. That's right. right. Wow. Can, I, can, wow. can, can I ask you this? Right. Go ahead. If if we're talking about spiritual excellence. And what you're explaining to me is a device that is unparalleled in this universe. Mm -hmm. Why is the always the goal of spiritual enlightenment and obtainment to never come back here? Like, if I learned all of this and I didn't know it, I would be wanting to get the fuck with it. I'm like, yo, let me come back here with a clean slate, yeah, yeah. with a laundry list of the things that I need to do right this time. People do really enjoy this body. Be like, why we do we trying to get away from? We do, and you see it. You do, and you see it in the charts. You see it in people's natal charts when you're able to see. Oh man, this is your third go round. This is your eighth. You're in all your outer planets. This is your last go. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this. I, my last two teachers, they they both said they're coming back to get another body, y'all. <laughs> There you go. Back, people do. People do. Um, so you say <laughs> he wasn't gonna go to Shoot, the Golden Simon Gate. Simon Kabuku probably came back, son. Yeah. I need another yeah, well, I need another lap well, around the Audubon. Right. Well I know I know my grandmaster, he he Sanyata said Swati, he he specifically said that he you know, he wasn't gonna go and do he was gonna develop his golden dragon body. You know what I'm saying? He'll teach somebody how to do it, but he wasn't working on that. He you know, he was coming back to do, you know what I'm saying, I guess another go-round. And then um, 
Crown Prince um, Ramesses Abel Bay, you know, when he passed, he he um he told my son that he was going to go get another body. So I mean, they was coming back. Yeah, it is. That that that's a good question because I I always was caught in the middle because when I studied. Uh, more of the Afrocentric scholars in, in that, that deal with Egypt, they talk about the body being a prison for the soul. But then mm-hmm. when I listen to some of the the, the white New Age teachers like Esther Hicks, um, and she's been dealing with, you know, like the secret and law of attraction and all that, she talks about how from our spiritual, when we look from our, when we made the promise to come down here, it seemed good, it seemed wonderful, we was happy. But when you forget who you are, you want to get the hell out of here. But when you go back over there, you want to come back here because you know if you if you got it popping like Blue Pill said, and you got all everything clicking, all the cylinders clicking, this shit is heaven on earth. It's, right. It's, it's right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I, I, I was you always, moving I, matter. I, I, yeah. I, I always did right. understand right. that. Because right. If, if, if they say imagination is the limit, then shit, we can fly. We can do whatever the fuck we could do up there, so called up here, so called down here. So I'm glad the brother um uh asked that question, you know. I wanna I wanna I wanna ask one more okay. Go ahead, Kay. No, I was gonna say and that's and that's how the zodiac ties into the body as well, literally, because it, it rules the different portions of the body. So when you're talking about the physical attributes and you able to master the, the clock of destiny, when you're able to master that wheel, then you got Aries ruling the head, you got Taurus ruling the neck. You got Gemini ruling the arms. You know what I'm saying? You got Cancer ruling the chest and and Leo ruling the heart. These are all parts of your body that are ruled by these signs. And Taurus ruling the throat is mad dynamic because if we're talking about the breath, we're talking about the throat, we're talking about the voice. You know, you're talking about the bull, the ox. Even in, in Hebrew, when you get in the Aleph, you know, it's called the ox because it's the primordial force. You think about Kapesh. You think about the foreleg, the ox leg, you know what I mean? It's the power, you know, so yeah, it's literally, and your body is, the upper body is the torso, you know, you get into the torus, reality itself is a torus feel, so it's, it's, our body is literally, yes, figuratively, but it's literally made up of it as well. Wow. Now, with, with all that being said and taking all of that in consideration and everything that Dr. Aleem has shared with us not only tonight, but you know, throughout For our years, entire man. interaction <laughs> with him. Yes. Man. And as as verses we are in this information, you know, what are your thoughts on the uptick, the increase and in intake of smoke, you know, in our bodies? You know what I'm saying? We seem to be a uh, blunted reality culture. You know what I'm saying? Every time mm-hmm. I see brothers, you know what I'm saying, they have a uh, some sort of um, device in their mouth, whether it be a pipe or a cigarette or a J or a blunt, you know, and, and you know what I'm saying, that, that just seems to be people's reality. They can't seem to do without it, you know. Right. They need that tote. They, they're taking that smoke into their body, into their lungs, right. you know. Um, what are your thoughts on this, you know what I'm saying, um, do, do you see any connection, any correlation, you know, with where we're at as a people spiritually and the fact that, you know, our internal uh, world is 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 in a fog? It has to be somewhat clouded at this point with all of this yeah. smoke. Well, well, I mean, it's funny that you're talking about the breath and so as the, you know, Uprising of the breath comes into consciousness in this culture. It comes with the legalization of the marijuana at the same time. Um, we can see that as a good or bad thing. It depends. Um, we know that um, ancient cultures have utilized all types of, um, you know, herbs in order to, you know, help with out of body experiences. You know, tapping into various timelines. Um, you know, um, the Oshawa. What is it? Uh, um, Ayahuasca. Right, the Ayahuasca plant, the Tabernacle Abuga plant, which is 70 times more important than the marijuana plant. You know that the shrooms, the mushrooms, you know, um, the ones that comes up in the dome on pills that's um, white and red um, have been used. Uh, the Amanita. 
Right, the Amanita, right. Um, so we know that these various, um, you know, things have been utilized in order to take us to um, the next level, remote viewing, out-of-body experience, soul travel. Right. I, I feel you. I'm talking about the abuse. Right, of now it. the abuse. Now, now look at the abuse. <laughs> you know that Masato also is now participating in um, the rise and the acceptance of the marijuana. There's two bills put right now before the Congress floor um, for them to pass it, you know, throughout all states. Uh, we know that it's been decriminalized um, within the majority of the states now. You know, if it, you know, so we know it's getting ready to happen. Um, but the abuse is that now Masato is getting ready to dictate and use um, and control the market with the terminate and seed. And so this uh, weed now that will be used will not have any seeds um, because they will not want anyone competing with their um, their particular crops. So we know that Philip Morris is getting ready to come out with a cigarette, um, a marijuana cigarette, and um, and um, Walmart would say that they'll sell it. So we know that this thing is getting ready to go viral. So you're going to be seeing a whole lot more of that happening. But the abuse of it is, is that man needs something in order to run away from from this particular so-called um, illusion or apparent reality. And um, one of the means is the abuse of um, of now this so-called um, plant that will now become, you know, legalized, you know, throughout the um, country. You know? um, so we're looking at something that is getting ready to take place um, on a large scale. So it's going to be an epidemic, you know, um, at least for a while, you know, until cats, you know, gain back consciousness you know, of themselves and start to appreciate, show self-worth, self-love, self-esteem. Um, obviously, these are just issues that they have to deal with. Uh, we know that, uh, we go to ISIS paper, Dr. Francis Cross Wilson speaks about the white cigarette. So now we got to speak about the white joint, all of them is somebody to um, the pills, man, you know, um, penis and his size of penis. So, you know, we call it, you know, the white dick, you know what I'm saying? So you, you just got to have this white dick in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? So it's a fetish, you know, and she speaks about all this in the ISIS papers, you know. So, um, you know, it ain't nothing that, you know, is news that's being said, but it is something in which that our people will have to learn, have to come to grips with, you know, male and female, as far as this epidemic um, continue um, taking place in the society, you know, because um, <laughs> really, you ask me as, you know, practice, you know, a breatharian, someone who practices this, this information, um, the last thing I want is something, you know, um, clogging up my lungs. You know, um, I get high just from breathing. You know, this is a technique that I can do um, in which that gets me high, you know, the same way that it does a person who um, have to smoke marijuana. You know what I'm saying? And I can do it, you know, probably just in the same amount of time as they do. So, the thing is, which way you want to go with it? You know, something to which that might have to take a problem or, you know, have a problem later. No, allegedly there's no um, deaths that has occurred from from smoking marijuana. More deaths occur from um, from alcohol than it does from marijuana. Um, all these things Bruh, apparently... I mean, you know, but, I, <laughs> I hear people say that a lot. You know what I mean? But I know hella niggas locked up from right. marijuana and not exactly. from selling it. I'm just saying impaired decisions that right. are made, you know, I know when people got to go, you know, put their work in, they get blunted. And that's for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Right. So people say, uh, I, you know, I don't know nobody that died from weed. I know hella niggas that killed, you know, other people off of weed. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know. Everything else remains to be said, regardless to whether somebody died or not. You know, um, like I said, I know people that are dependent. You know, they can't make a move I, I just without the marijuana plant. You know I just bought it up because that is what they would tell you <laughs> off the bat. Right. You know, but me yeah. personally, me personally, um, like I said, I'd rather meditate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Arlene, it's kind of a, a, a weird time, I guess, in the history of the world, or, you know, being mm -hmm. that 
there's so much esoteric information readily available via the internet. Um, I, I'm I, I'm assuming there was times when only you had to be a part of a secret society to be to be privy to this type of information. I mean, you had to be part of an exclusive exclusive club to be part of this information. It's so available to the public at this time, and it makes me think. Why is there a reason why they only reserve esoteric information to those part to be part of that that were a part of a secret society? Was there something that they didn't want out? Did they not want the masses to know about it? Because it just seems as though so few people what so few people knew about. Everybody could basically research in an hour right now on Google. Right. Well, um, I know when I was coming out. Um, studying this information, I had to read hundreds and thousands of books, um, booklets, articles, magazines, et cetera, et cetera. So um, in order to put all these pieces of the puzzle together, like you said, now, you know, Google is, you know, is your best friend, you know, but before that, you know, you had, you know, you had to do nothing but read, you know, books, you know, um, or either, like you said, was part of a secret society. You know, whether it's the Rose of Crucians, the Golden Dawn, the O2, um, O2, um, TO, uh, whether it was the, um, Masonic Order, you know, coming from the Scottish or the York Rites, or whatever the case, you know, is, you know, um, you was part of one of these particular organizations. And, you know, but even the average, I've done taught Rose of Crucians, I've taught, um, Golden Dawn members, um, OTO members, and, the information that we teach from this esoteric level, the average of them don't don't have never gotten this information. They never put this information together like this. So we're, we're living in a time where even those who are part of these particular secret societies don't know what's going on um, to this level that we have obtained, um, being not necessarily part of the secret order. Mm. You know, um, and, you so know, is, right? Is, is, is there a reason they kept it from the masses for so long? Yeah, well, I mean, remember, Cash Your Pearl is not, you know, unto swine. So the thing is, is that swine is talking about those who was just curious, those who were there, just there in order to um, get what they, you know, could get from it to uh, be able to manipulate others, utilizing it, uh, and be no benefit to the society as whole. Um, so right. you didn't catch well, the pearl, you didn't, you didn't write. But you just gave them um, certain um, things that they worked off of, you know, enough to satisfy them so they can go on about their business. But the real meat was kept, you know, so for those who continue going and continue showing, improving, you know, um, who they really wanted to be, you know. And so uh, in this regard, yeah, you had to, you know, give it out in various degrees. You had to give it out in morsels. Um, even the Bible speaks about when Paul was asked about it, you know, you don't give a meat into babes, you know, you give them milk. <laughs> right, you know, right, right. You know, so <laughs> I mean so that's do just you think it that um the availability of this flood of information has worked more as a detriment against society, or do you see the benefits it, of it, it would you be, know, it, with it, people it, it, it would, okay. It would be a detriment if there was no teachings, you know, or awakenings. It would be a detriment. But being that we are here, you know, teaching and getting this information out as much as possible, we're helpful in the gaps for those who were just curious or for those who were just trying to, um, you know, you know, get what they can. In other words, it would show those who were serious by, you know, the fruits in which that, you know, um, each and every one of us bear. You know, that's the whole thing. You know, they say, you know, a prophet by the fruits that they bear. Well, you know, an individual who's serious about this by the fruits in which that they bear. You know, um, you know how long they've been doing it. Um, well, you know, what's their consistency? You know, what the books that they have written, uh, what radio shows they have done, or, you know, what music they have put out. You know, in other words, you know, what have they done, you know, in order to help put the pieces of this puzzle together? You know, and that's going to be the criteria. So. You know, even though you might have people come from these various so-called secret societies or various other schools, um, it's still fragmented. You know, a lot of them still come, well, you know, in the Rosicrucian Fellowship, you know, I study, you know, astrology, you know, um, you know, so they follow, you know, just one aspect. 
or if they came from the OTO, well, you know, we did rituals, you know, with the, um, you know, naked women on the table and, yeah, okay, <laughs> you know, it, 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 you know, but we never did no healing exercises or healing or breathing exercises. Um, the Golden Dawn, you know, they, you know, they doing everything to the four directions and um, to the four angels, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's good, but, all right, but they still not doing any Qigong or Tai Chi. So the shit that they doing is all of it is fragmented. You know, it's not right. until you bring all the pieces of the puzzle together, you know, that you get a um, um a cohesive, holistic, um, you know, uh, you know, principle or design. You know, so that's that's our job is to bring all the pieces of the puzzle together. You know, just just speaking on the anatomy of God, and when you think of God or what we call God or the universe, one of the things that come to mind is sexual energy, uh, mm -hmm. which is a creative force that brings man into existence. Um, mm -hmm. Going back to the Bible, I was watching uh, on YouTube, I was watching, I was looking at Sarnetta's channel, and looking at, he had a debate with the Hebrew Israelites and um, some brothers from Kemet, and the brothers was kind of clowning Kemet from all, uh, you know, Egypt has a lot of sexual images on the wall. They have yeah. penises, phalluses, they have this, they have that, you yeah. know. So the brothers were saying, you know, ancient <laughs> Egypt, with the, in Kemet, they was into some homo shit. Everywhere they turn around, they see a phallic symbol. So... Yeah. You know, just dealing with the anatomy of God in the universe. What, what? Why would the Egyptians show so many, so much sexual, what they, what we call sexual imagery, on the, um, on the walls? Remember, the unk symbol is a sexual symbol. It is the combination of the man penis inserted inside of the vagina, um, along the um ovaries, uh, um, into the um, and you see the top portion, which is the uterus. So it symbolizes life. That's all the penis symbolizes is the wand is the um is the wand, the magic wand of life. Um, um you know, that's that's what it is. You know, and that's what the Kemites or the Temerians used it for in that regard. That's what it was that's what it was shown. You know what I'm saying? Um they didn't see the um show me the picture of, of someone sucking it. <laughs> the one picture that you can show is talking about Atom and how he was the self um 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 the self in, um, initiator. He was the great he she. All right, talking about the androgynous energy, which is talking about the royal bari is actually of the serpent biting his tail. You know what I'm saying? Which is talking about actually uh, your kundalini energy or your kundalini force. You know, which is sexual energy. You know, and how from Atun came forth Shu, Tefnut. From Shu and Tefnut came Geb and Newt. From Geb and Newt came forth. Or saw, or set, nephet, and set. So it's talking about the generation of life, the generational life principle, and that's what Atum symbolized. This is why Atum becomes the Adam in our body, and he becomes the father of all of us. You know what I'm saying? You remember, he knew right. Eve and Eve conceived. You know what I'm saying? So all of this is told over and over again. Whether it's coming from the Bible, whether it's coming from off the walls of ancient Egypt, it's the same principle. These people get confused because they're just looking at the industry and can't break it down esoterically. You know. So what does what does Eve what does Eve coming from the rib of Adam um, and the apple? What does all of that you know yeah. esoterically? Brother, what does that deal with? KT, Brother KT broke it down. He said um, it's the ribosome. The word rib is the first part of ribosome. R i b o s o m e is ribosome, but it's the rib. And what is the ribosome? It comes from RNA, which is what is called ribonucleic acid, which is the rib again. So deoxyribonucleic acid, once again, the rib again is there. So it's talking about Eve is, you talking about the atom. The evolution of the atom comes forth what? The next portion of atom is the molecule. What is the molecule? DNA. What is DNA? Deoxyribonucleic acid, the rib. So it's talking about the evolution of subatomic particles to atomic particles to molecular particles to cellular particles. That's Eve. So that's all it's talking about. It's not Eve as in um, an actual rib was taken away, taken from of Adam, a man. It's talking about a principle, you know what I'm saying? An evolutionary state 
of what formed the physical body into existence. That's what it's talking about, you know. So um, that's all that was on the walls of ancient Egypt, you know. Um, we have to start looking at these things and decoding them. Um, it's good that we can rag and say, oh, yeah, uh, the nigga showing his Johnson. <laughs> yeah. You know, look at that. You know, that's amazing, isn't it? Oh, that guy's doing some old homo shit. Okay. You know, <laughs> he's showing his Johnson and that's some old homo shit. Okay. That's, that's, that's the belief system. But now let's take it to its esoteric principle because I can show you in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Where John ran away from Jesus and he was butt ass naked. What what was this dude butt naked for? <laughs> so why was he butt naked? Why why, why yeah. was he? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm I'm showing you the story, you know what I'm saying, in the New Testament where it states that John ran away from Jesus and he was butt naked. That's in the can Bible. I, can I interject? Yeah, go do ahead. You, do you both feel that at this particular point that you know, the people that we're talking about in society in general is just a little too immature to have right. these conversations at this point. Like, what has happened to us as a people right. where, you know, I can't see John Henry Clark having this conversation. I can't see, you know, some of the elders that I grew up around even entertaining this level of, buffoonery, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not talking on our part cuz we're just chopping up what's on the table, you know what I'm saying? Right. It, it's right. this is what's being served in the public. So, you know, do you think that there's just a level of Im immaturity based on religious indoctrination and just based on our society in general, you know, that reinforces, you know, men having a uh, minds of children? that right. this is where we're at and we're having these conversations that, you know, in, 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 our, in our smaller circles, of course, these conversations have already been had. You know, we've moved past this and here we are again. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is the threat that um, presents itself when now esoteric information is now becoming accessible to the general public but they yeah. skip over the reading part, which was so essential, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And they're only looking for, you know, like when you had a book and they had a figure in the book and you would go to the book and read underneath the picture, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> figure one, two, like right. that's what they're reading. They're reading what's under figure one, two, and that's the lesson. Right. You know what I mean? And they're not reading yeah. what incorporated the picture in the first place. they just going straight to the picture and using that as dialogue material. Look what exactly. I just found. Exactly. And that's what we dealing with? Right. Yeah, that's that attention deficit disorder, man. <laughs> exactly. That's what that is. That we're so used to everything moving so fast. Microwave is done. Internet, you know, jump here, jump there, move, move, move. Um, either, ever since a child, children have been sat in front of a television, channel, 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 10-second commercial, 30-second commercial, looking at PBS or the cartoons, move, 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 flash, 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 color, color, color. So now as they, now that they're older, their mind has been uh, programmed to, to being in tune with that type of frequency. So to sit down and read one of those old school books with the golden letters, you know what I mean, and the little, uh, the little fabric, a bookmark inside, like they can't just sit there. No, no pictures, <laughs> no pictures yeah. at all. And they gotta, they gotta read about the dude for for thirty, forty pages before he even talk about what he talking about. Like that takes Word. patience. <laughs> it takes yeah. patience. It takes breath. It takes breathing. Cause breathing. reading, <laughs> reading is breathing. When you read a book, you're breathing the book. Because that ain't nothing but, but a bunch of words on a paper. And what you're attempting to do is to draw in and absorb the thought process of another and gain the rhetoric by taking it with a grain of salt so that you can utilize it in your walk of life. That is a breath. And if you already aren't breathing because you're holding your breath and you're breathing real, real shallow like most people do, then how are you going to have the patience to sit down and really be able to appreciate the written word from somebody. So, you know, it's it's indoctrination. Now, I, I, I definitely... I, yeah, yeah, 
No, I mean, you know, my next question is, like, do you think that this information that we're dealing with, these practices that we're speaking of, you know, um, the uh, the level of re-education that we know has to take place in the community, are we ever going to be able to do this without building institutions, without putting a brick and mortar in place where people can come, like how Shaolin Temple had a Shaolin Temple we could set it up and see if we need to just let people come somewhere and learn this information physically. That's what we're doing. You know, you is it, right it going to be that. effective? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what we're doing here in North Carolina right now. Um, okay, speak you know, on it, God. Yeah, we got three acres of land. So we already built our store, our temple, our house, um, our garden. You know, um, we got cabins on the land, so anybody who wants to stay on the land can actually have tents for either, you know, stay on the land. And um, that's what we just did this past weekend. You know, uh, we had our um, spring, you know, um, equinox um, event, you know, three days of um, going through these sciences. It was the Melina Conference, um, the extended version, because we didn't really get time um, to go over too much information while we was at the King Simon event. Um, this past year, so I said, well, sure, we'll do the extended version here on our land. So we went over Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, Pran, and Killing, all the energy modalities and different other um, sciences, um, herbology, acupressure, reflexology, um, idosology. So, you know, we went into a whole lot of information over three days, you know, and uh, we do it at least um, six times out the year, you know, um, for right now. So, I mean, that's what we're working on. So we actually have a place built already and set up, um, you know, so. Well, well, we certainly appreciate you coming on the line, um, Brother Arlene. I appreciate uh, thanks to Blue Pill and KT for joining. All of y'all. Appreciate all of y'all. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling is Absolutely. definitely mutual. It's been an honor. Right. Definitely. Definitely indeed. an honor. And on that note, y'all, you know, we uh, stay tuned. Hit up the brother Aleem, hit up Blue, hit up KT. Uh, we 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 gonna always have something new for y'all, and we signing out, y'all. Peace. 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 HollywoodDakota.com. dot <laughs> <laughs> right. com. forty four, April fourth. Check us out. Peace. Peace.